The fluid mosaic model is the most accepted concept for a plasma membrane and reaching here took hundreds of years of testing and modification of several ideas of several people and let's take a look at the history of the plasma membrane. Now we know the plasma membrane is made of lipids and the first suggestion of a lipid membrane was given by Ernest Overton in 1890s. He was actually testing the permeability of different solutes through the root hair cells and he arrived at a conclusion that there was something similar to lipid in the membrane which allowed the easy passage of it and hence we got the first hint towards the presence of a lipid membrane in a cell. It was in 1925, the Dutch scientist Grendel and Gotter were actually studying about the surface area of RBC. So for their surprise, when they actually suspended the lipid molecules in water, they were able to observe two times the surface area of the normal RBC. In the case of a mature RBC, there is no nucleus or any cell organelles. So the only membrane that is present is actually the plasma membrane. So they arrived at a conclusion that there is two times the surface area for a membrane that is present in a single RBC. And so they arrived at the concept of a bilayer of the lipids. And they were the first ones actually suggested that the polar part of the membrane will be present towards the water and the non-polar part will be present towards the inner side and hence it will be thermodynamically feasible. Now we have made our lipid bilayer membrane. By about 1950s, it was very clear that protein is also present in the membrane. So the Daniele Davison model actually included the presence of protein into the membrane. So according to the Daniele Davison model, there was a layer of lipid which was actually covered by proteins on the two sides. So we have a trilaminar membrane. And the fourth model which we are discussing is the unit membrane concept. And it was proposed by David Robertson. According to this model, there was an inner lipid core which had two membranes and two layers of protein on each side. Actually, it is a tetralaminar concept. It actually gave more support to the Daniele Davison model itself because it also had this, you know, lipid core and the protein concept. By these two models, we were able to add the presence of protein to the membrane. So in later researches, it was found that the proteins on the membrane is actually used for transport. And also, the several studies suggested that the proteins had a globular structure. So globular structure and for transport. So having a layer or a sheet of protein doesn't make a sense. So that was the time and that was the thought which actually led to the most accepted model and that is the fluid mosaic model. It was in 1972. The two scientists, Singer and Nicholson, actually studied about the cell membrane. According to them, the proteins are present on the membrane in a mosaic-like manner. That means they are randomly arranged in the membrane and also it is having a fluid nature. That means the lipids and the proteins can actually move from one place to another place to do its function. So this is the most accepted concept even now. Snapshot time. We have actually started with the Overton model which actually suggested the presence of lipid in a membrane. And finally, we have studied the fluid mosaic model which was suggested by Singer and Nicholson. The fluid mosaic model actually suggests that there are actually two layers of lipid and there is actually protein which is actually present in this lipid. And the protein can be of two types. It can be intrinsic or that can be extrinsic. And do you know what are all these things? And we will be discussing the structure in detail in the next video. And that was your 3 minutes. See you in the next one.